You know a video game is old when there's an option to rewatch the intro video on the main menu. Wow. Fallout has always been one of my favorite franchises. Honestly, anything with radiation gets me excited for some reason. Thanks to high school science class, most of us have heard about radiation. Like most people, I was introduced to Fallout by Todd Howard. You dork. Go back to the chess club. Or God Howard. Yes, I was in the chess club. And even though I've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into Fallout 3 and all the titles that came out after it, I've never really played the original Fallout. So today, we're going to spoil a game that came out in 1997. If you haven't played it, that's kind of your fault. I mean, this game's older than most of the people probably watching this video. In 1997, I was like a baby. Why am I making this video? I should make something about GTA. The original Fallout is one of the grandfathers of modern RPG games. With a heavy focus relying on giving the players freedom to do what they want, sometimes they gave players a little bit too many freedoms. What's Butch's problem anyway? As Fallout was initially not able to release in Europe due to the fact that you were able to kill children in the game. This is a very sensitive subject, but how do you tell them that you don't want children? Yeah. That's, that's a lot. But eventually, version 1.2 removed children from the game, allowing for sales overseas. Yeah, it's probably a good call. And although critically acclaimed, it didn't quite reach the sales expectations that the developers were hoping for. But I mean, you guys did well enough for a sequel, so it really doesn't matter, right? In fact, Interplay actually had to sell the rights to Fallout to Bethesda because they were going bankrupt. So I think it, overall it was a success. It could have been much worse for you guys. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. The game is set 80 years after a planetary nuclear war known only as the Great War, which is what we originally called World War I. Think about that. You play as a vault dweller in Vault 13, located in the ruins of Southern California. It's pretty much LA still, but all of LA is now Skid Row. I mean, come on, these are identical. The water chip that creates clean drinking water for the vault just went out. And of course, you are tasked with going out into the wasteland to find a replacement. This is crucial to our survival. Making you the ultimate water boy. L -l Look at me, I'm the w -w water boy. We begin the game at Vault 13, but before actually starting, we get to choose one of three pre-made characters or create our own. I created a character so many damn times, I just stopped naming him. So once the game actually started to make sense and I wasn't dying non-stop, I was just kind of stuck with a character named Nun. Say my name. I'm the Nun. The character creation menu is remarkably in-depth for a game from the 90s. And the Fallout patented special system is probably like one of my favorite things ever. Special stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. These are like near perfect attributes to describe a player character, but more importantly, it's an anacronym that spells out the word special while also dictating what makes you special. I'm sorry, it's just, it's amazing. It's actually like the coolest fucking thing ever. I'm special! Leaving the vault, we don't have too much information to go off of. The overseer recommends that we go to a nearby vault, Vault 15. And since it's the only other location we have on our map, we're almost kind of forced into heading that way. In between our vault and Vault 15 is a small settlement known as Shady Sands. Shady nasties? Shit dynasties, asshole. Weird. There's really not much going on in this town, except for rad scorpions, because that's the only thing that people seem interested in talking about. Oh my yes, great packs of rad scorpions are killing our herds. I offered to kill them, but I didn't. Until one reset where I hit the right dialogue with this character. Ian. I'm ready. Are you ready to work out? If you select the right speech options, Ian will join you as a companion for free. At the time, I didn't know it, but he would grow to become my best friend, as I could force him to stay really close to me, which is a fantasy I have about people in the real world. 
but that doesn't matter. With Ian's help, we're finally able to wipe the rad scorpion nest out. He did most of the work while I kind of cowered behind his thick, meaty thighs. I got these chicken thighs on sale the other day. They are grade A chicken thighs. They're gonna be amazing. Combat in Fallout 1 is turn-based, and you only get as many action points per turn as you have agility stat points, making agility a super important stat in this game. You have to get low, you have to drop your butt down, you gotta get your hands out. The system is slow and cumbersome at times, but after a few skirmishes, it all starts to make sense and you start to go from prey to predator. However, I wasn't very good at combat yet. Ian was actually able to hit them from a reasonable distance while I just stood there flailing around in a great panic while getting stung in the face. But it's fine, we killed him. And despite that being Shady Sand's biggest problem, no one really cared that much that I did that for him. Ah, things are much more settled now. I'm sure I will be back to this place later, and we will meet again. Screw this ungrateful place, let's go to Vault 15. Once I got to Vault 15, I realized that I needed a rope to get in, so I headed straight back to Shady Sands to steal one off this guy. I really wish I was done with this fucking place. But now that we're in, we just grab a water chip and head back to Vault 13. LOL, right? Could you imagine if that was just the whole game? I'm sure you've already guessed, there's no water chip here. There's really not too much here at all. I got an SMG and I finally found some armor so I could put something into this slot. But as for water chip, yeah, it's a bust. And since the next location to us is a raider camp, it looks like we're going to a raider camp. Yeah, I'm not at all prepared for this. For some reason, the raiders here think I'm like the father of their leader. My son, their leader, like killed me. Your son is, uh, you know, he's an individual, man. You treat him like he's a, an object. <laughs> but no matter what dialogue option I choose, it always ends in a fight. A fight that I am not winning, even with Ian's help. So once again, I, I will be back here. I promise, but we're just going to move on to the next location, a place that Ian told me about, Junktown. Junktown is by far the largest town we've seen so far, and thank God the buildings are at least labeled here. While interrogating people at the general store, a customer walks in and tries to kill the shop owner and acting mayor, Killian. Which is like a really dumb idea. At this point, I'm looking for any reason to whip my gun out and get some XP. I started blasting. Bah, bah. Wow. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. So of course, that's exactly what I did. After killing the assailant, we can talk to Killian. Killian believes Gizmo, a casino owner and crime boss, is behind this. I know Gizmo's behind this, but I need proof. Which, hmm. I wonder where he got that impression. Surely it has nothing to do with what the guy said before trying to assassinate him. <laughs> Batman level detective. Why is the Joker always the fun one? I'm fun. <laughs> I'm fun, see? <laughs> in order to confirm his suspicions, we turn into a rat. He gives us a wire and it's our job to get a confession. And after a couple of leading dialogue options that I got on my first try, we get him to confess to an attempted murder. That's easy. I want him dead because he cramps my business. We go back to Killian in order to turn the confession in, and he asks if we want to go help kill Gizmo. You up for it? Might be good for a laugh. Which, <laughs> duh, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Of course I'm down for murder, but I never followed through. After this, shit got crazy. Somehow a dog adopted me and started following me around. Don't know why that happened. Then I saw some guy domestic violence his girlfriend at a bar and then get blown to bits by the bartender because of it. And then I just kind of ended my day getting pissed drunk with the townies. <laughs> Junk town. 10 out of 10. Great place. But yeah, I couldn't find the guy I needed to talk to in order to start the mission to kill Gizmo. So me, Ian, and our new family dog just sort of sauntered away from town. And I know I've said this about the last two locations, but once again, I promise I will be back here. Eventually, just not right now. The next location on the map to visit is The Hub. This is a legit city, complete with homeless vagrants. We're alive and out of control! A side note, don't pay this guy 500 caps for information. It's worthless and he's a scam artist. Hey man, can you spare a few caps? He tells me I should check the vaults for a water chip, which holy shit. Wow, I should check the vaults. How did I not think of that? That's such good info. I'm so 
thankful I gave you money, I just can't p repay you enough. It wasn't until I saw gun store prices that I realized I am living in poverty. Oh my god, 4,000 fucking dollars for that? What the fuck? The bartering system for this game is offensive to say the least. You can't set the number of items you would like to trade, forcing you to go one by one or just selecting all. But all stops at 99. So if you need to send someone 500 of something that you have a thousand of, you will literally need to click this button 500 uh, six, times. 477, 478, 479, 480, 481, 482, 43. To make it all worse, you need to actually do math in order to make sure you aren't getting ripped off. I used my phone's calculator twice while playing this game to ensure I didn't spend an absurd amount of time watching a number go up. What the fuck? I mean, it's an old game, but this is crazy. It's all part of the experience, you know? It takes a long time to count money, right? Whatever. After selling everything I could, I was up to a modest 1,500 caps. Yeah, pretty wealthy. Which I immediately took to stake.com, and it turns out I was good at gambling. 50 caps, winner. You got double your money, oh shit. Well overdue, by the way. 50 caps, sorry, better luck next time. 50 caps, winner. Eleven back to back. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, that's, dude, that's what? Ten. I earned a few caps and turned my focus back onto the mission. Water. But where could I find water? Yeah, there's a group in this town called the Water Merchants. It's almost like guaranteed that you should go talk to them, right? I mean, it's got water in the name after all. What the hell? I've got my bottle of water. <laughs> But they don't have a water chip. However, they do know where one is, a city called Necropolis, which is an awfully inviting name. Furthermore, they can also extend the timer by 100 days if you pay them 2,000 caps to deliver water to your vault. But since I'm broke and my best source of income so far has been gambling, we head west to Necropolis. Necropolis is as advertised. It's a city of zombies, or more politically correct, uh, ghouls. I'm a ghoul. A freak. When first entering the location, all the ghouls in the immediate area are hostile. But after clearing them out, I wasn't quite sure where to go until a misclick led me into the sewers. Fantastic. Two of you are walking around in the sewers naked looking for rings and coins. You feel it with your feet. Also, this background music is like some Hans Zimmer movie score kind of shit. It manages to be creepy, intense, suspenseful, and epic all at once. Kudos, good music. Within the sewers, I meet some ghouls that are capable of speech. And holy shit, their water pump is broken, and they have a water chip. Now, I don't really care that their water pump is broken. Obviously, I don't give a shit about helping out these creepy sewer zombies. However, their coveted water chip will soon be mine. Except, it won't. The entrance to the vault containing the chip is guarded by super mutants. When talking to Harry, yes, <laughs> This guy's name is Harry. You not ghoul, I knew, I knew, not fool Harry. It either ends in a fight that I lose, or I get transported to his leader who seems to be in some sort of vault where I get to talk to the lieutenant. Oh, this is excellent. This asshat spills his guts and tells me everything about their plan, even the fact that he's impotent and his PP don't work so good no more. Presently, there is a slight problem in the reproductive process. Penis injections don't work. Really glad you told me. Their plan is rather simple. Basically, they want to turn all people into super mutants, but he's not the leader. We all work for the master. The leader of this little science experiment is someone referred to as the master. Wow, I wonder if that character is important. When turning people into super mutants, if the person was exposed to radiation prior to being dipped, they come out dumber than expected. Hey. And because 99% of human life lives in a nuclear wasteland, they're kind of fucked. They need prime normals, or people not affected by radiation, meaning Vault 13 is a prime target. He presses us for the vault's location, and at this point we have two options. Refuse and get shredded. Dead, dead, gonna die. Every time. Or give him the location. 
This option actually triggers a cutscene, where you get turned into a super mutant and your home vault gets absolutely wrecked by the lieutenant's army. Okay, hold on, this is a little confusing because I thought he wanted to convert them into super mutants, so why is he just killing everyone in the vault? I mean, y you know what? No, it doesn't matter, whatever. Going back to the previous save, it was apparent that I would be unable to kill Harry, Barry, Gary, Larry, and Terry. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know, that's all their names. It's in the wiki. Ah, oh, man, love it. But now we're kind of stuck. We're not charismatic enough to convince him to let us through. You not ghoul. And we're certainly not strong enough to beat them in a fight. So with nothing but dead ends in front of me, I decide to revert to a save from the last time that my character was actually having any sort of enjoyment. The bar at Junktown. Okay, what is almost as good as power? Um... Money. But I'm broke. However, two things dawned on me in this moment of clarity in a junk town bar. One is that I'm actually pretty good at gambling. Do not get it twisted. Do not gamble. Gambling is entertainment and entertainment only. And two is that you can hold down number keys to select dialogue options. What this means is I could spam gamble 50 caps on roulette over and over again. And since my luck is so high, I win more than half of the time. But warning, this is a video game strategy and it will not work with whatever website people like XQC and Trainrex are shoving down your throat on Twitch. Oh yeah, I guess it got banned. Yeah, never mind. But I was earning caps at an absurd rate. Uh -oh. So to really kick it into gear, I decided to engineer a spam contraption. What are you doing? And went AFK. And I got rich. Very rich. And now that we're rich, everything's easy. We can go uh -oh. buy some decent equipment and go on a power leveling spree. I killed rats. I killed mole rats. I did more math and I bought a $40,000 set of combat armor. I killed more zombies. I finally went back and killed Gizmo. It turns out the guy I had to talk to was like the first guard you see in Junktown. Let me guess, someone stole your sweet roll. Easy, I'm straight up one-shotting rad scorpions. I joined the Brotherhood of Steel, got expensive plastic surgery that made me into a better man. So I've undergone two vagina plasties and I'm just not happy with the, the way they look. I met sentient cows. I killed some praying mantises? I bought myself that 100 extra days after having the water merchants make a supply run to my vault. I found a giant footprint? What the fuck is that? I found a crashed alien spaceship and took their ray gun. I met a used car salesman? I killed him and I took his BB gun. That's what he gets for being a salesman. Salespeople suck. No, I'm just on the phone with this stupid salesman. He's so dumb. Probably just gonna keep him on the line forever and not buy anything. And I got to see a time-traveling phone booth, which definitely uh, isn't a reference to a popular TV show. I even managed to eliminate a deathclaw nest. Barely, but we got it done. But yeah, lots of wacky shit out here. But after all my trials and tribulations, it was finally time to return to Necropolis, kill those mutants, and get my water chip. Returning to Necropolis, all the non-hostile ghouls that made up the city before are now dead. I guess I allowed too much in-time game to pass, and the super mutants launched an assault on the city, killing all of its inhabitants. Which is fine, actually. Good news, everyone! Because now at least I won't feel any guilt when stealing their water chip. Although Harry was still a tough fight, me and my dogman team were able to peacefully resolve any differences we had with the super mutants. And we were finally able to gain access to Vault 12. There were glowing ones in the vault, and I imagine this would have been a tough fight like a few levels ago, but now it's like a shooting range. I think I just grew some hair on my chest. I don't think I took any damage this whole time. After looting around for a bit, I found it. The glorious water chip. And back to Vault 13 we go. Okay, cool, we beat the game. At this point, I truly did believe that I had beaten the game and all I had left to do was return the chip. And the only thing standing between me and victory is random encounters while traveling back to the vault. And funny enough, I actually got the mid-game alert informing me that I only have so many days left to find the chip while delivering the chip. Quit bitching, guys. I'll be there soon. Daddy loves you. Arriving at Vault 13, we immediately talk to the Overseer from the beginning of the game. We tell him we have the chip, and he responds with okie dokie? 
Okie dokie. What the fuck, man? I want you to be excited, but don't say that at me. Even though that was not exactly the response I was expecting, the water chip works. Reboot is good. Ha! It's working! And he tells us we need to go create a report of our journeys, and we get teleported to the library. And now, needlessly, we need to run back across the room in order to speak with him again. He didn't like your report. In fact, they scared the heck out of me. And now he wants us, yes, me, my criminal friend, and my dog, to go take on an entire super mutant army. Jesus fuck, dude, do you understand what you're asking me to do? You seem so chill about it. But I guess the game isn't over until we destroy their secret lab, so here we go, taking on an army. The cathedral is one of the last places on the map I haven't visited, and since I don't know where the military base is, it becomes the next obvious destination. In order to save time, on the way to the cathedral, I spoke to every NPC I could about mutants. I was like that weird kid in class that just wanted to talk about lizards. I like turtles. Out of all the conversations I had, one of them stuck out. Vree at the Brotherhood of Steel, who gave me a hard drive containing proof that super mutants can't reproduce. Here, take this holodisc. It's got copies of my autopsies on mutant corpses. And a pirated copy of The Sims 1. <laughs> Also, I need to mention, while I was there, I stole this fancy motor off this high-ranking official in the Brotherhood, and I used it to create my very own suit of armor. So now I look like this. Pretty cool. Plus, the guy I stole it from was a dick. He totally had it coming. The cathedral is controlled by a cult named Children of the Cathedral. Very original. This is an A-tier cult complete with robes and creepy imagery used to brainwash the followers. Unity. Oh, I will say the term cult. It's a little judgmental. I would say the same thing, yeah. You only have to talk to like two people here before it's clear that you need to speak with Morpheus, since that's literally what every NPC is telling you to go do. This NPC named Lasher of Children, very intense name, even gave us a symbol that we can use to get past the Nightkin in order to speak with Morpheus. We're told he's in the top of the tower. However, the door that leads to the stairs is locked. I repeatedly spammed lockpicks on this until they broke, like multiple times. Frustrated with how much time I spent clicking on a door, I decided I would explore the rest of the map to find the military base. After all, I still had a location missing, and there were a few large areas of the map that I haven't quite explored yet. So I left the cathedral and I began my search. I initially headed toward the upper left part of the map because this was a largely unexplored area for me, but as I drew closer to the corner, I got a random event with a group of super mutants that absolutely wrecked my team. Oh yeah, by the way, I also got all the companions because I figured I'd need all the help I could get. We might not be able to kill you, but we can defeat you with the power of friendship. But after getting absolutely demolished by these super mutants, I decided to go explore the other side of the map. At the time, I didn't realize this, but this was a mistake. I spent way too much time searching the rest of the map for no reason at all. The super mutant encounter was triggered because I was nearing the military base, a pattern that took me way too long to realize. In fact, 80% of the time that I would journey up into this part of the map, I would get that same super mutant encounter. I'm beginning to see a pattern here that I'm not so sure if I like. <laughs> <laughs> Which obviously means the military base is nearby. My incompetence caused me to lose three hours of my life. I deserve it. But finally, I made it. Mariposa is Spanish for butterfly, and it's one of the prettiest words I know. The reason I bring this up is because Mariposa is the code name for this military base. And yeah, I'm pretty sure we're in the right spot since it's guarded by mutants. But victory was in sight. All I had to do was blow up the base. And after an easy victory out front, I marched right in and got turned into cottage cheese. Ah, oh, fuck. So we reset and we ran back, except this time we wore COC robes. COC is children of the cathedral, though you remember, the weird church people. I figured they might be okay with that. And they were. And after stealing the code off of this mutant, we're able to just freely move about the open world cabin until we get here. Cult members aren't allowed to move past this point. And of course, this is a problem because I'm almost positive I need to get to that elevator. <sighs> I hate elevators. Any and all speech options with this mutant lead me to the lieutenant, where I die a very 
graphic death, or a fight with him. So fuck it, let's put the power armor back on and do some negotiating with our plasma rifle. That was easy. After this, we can move on to the fourth floor. The fourth floor turns out to be where the lieutenant was the entire time. If you remember when we were teleported there talking to Harry back in Necropolis. But yeah, I completely avoided that area, as I already knew that that would not be an easy fight, and I'm done with getting killed by that guy. And instead, I made my way to the control room, where everybody there was terrified. I felt like I was robbing a McDonald's, like nobody cared about their job. They all just surrendered immediately. I surrender! In front of the control room, we can see the location of the ending cutscene that we saw earlier in the game. This is where they're making mutants. I know this because I can see big green vats. And I'm smart and can put two and two together. And of course, like all good villainous layers, there's a self-destruct button. After using science to repair this terminal, you can go download data on a few people. One of them being Richard Gray. Remember that name, it's important. Outside of this, you can also run various security codes. Each of these have different countdowns for self-destruct. Why do we need so many different countdowns for self-destruct? Don't ask, don't know. Don't even think about it anymore. But after a few quick saves, I found the codes that give me like five minutes. It's this one. Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. This ship will self-destruct in three minutes. Thank God, half of these super mutants are idiots. In combat, they constantly mow each other down because they insist on firing at me even though there's like multiple friendlies in their way. If it weren't for them being so stupid, I don't know if I would have won the fight to get out of this vault or military base, it, whatever, they look the same. After a stressful fight to get out of the base, we get a new explosion cutscene depicting the destruction of Mariposa. Also, I need to make note that every single one of my companions, except for the dog, died in that military base. We will never forget. With nothing left to destroy, we head back to Vault 13 in order to tell the Overseer that we destroyed their military base and we should be fine. And that's it, right? The game's over? What news of the mutants? All of them? What about the mutant leader? What about this so-called master. He must be stopped. If not, he could rebuild his empire of mutants and would certainly strike back at us. The vault will not be safe until the master is dead. Oh, fuck, there's more. Of course. The Master has been a shadowy figure this entire game. We only get tidbits of information on him, until I opened one of the logs I downloaded from the military base. Richard Gray. This log is a series of voice entries left by Richard after an accident at Mariposa military base. An accident that left him and a man named Harold exposed to FEV. Quick fun fact, Harold is actually the tree guy in Fallout 3. Leave me alone. Which is pretty neat, huh? But whereas super mutants are simply dipped in a vat of FEV, Richard spent days in a vat, which had, well, adverse effects, to put it lightly. Throughout these logs, we see Richard's demeanor change and his morality dissolve. He talks about how he's been combining animals together using FEV. He combined a rat and a dog, and he was excited about it. So much so that he is now certain that this is the future of evolution. Basically, he just wants to make everything into Cronenberg world. Literally just like Rick and Morty. At least they're not in love with you anymore, though. It's a huge step in the right direction. And almost without a doubt, Richard Gray is the master. But where is he? With nowhere left to search, we once again find ourselves back at the cathedral. And holy shit, this weird little symbol that the guy gave me opens the door like a key. Uh, I wasted so much time. But now that we're in, we can finally speak to Morpheus. He's hostile. Every time he sees me, he attacks on sight. The reason he's hostile is because of my dog. I actually had to Google this one because I was so confused as to why he kept attacking me. And it turns out it's because of my dog. And since you can't talk to dog meat and you can't tell him to stay or leave, you only have one option, old yeller style. What? kind of cruel twist of fate made it so that my dog was the only companion to survive the military base just so I could shoot him in the head in front of a church. 
It's just absurd, man. If the other companions were still alive, I could simply have them wait outside. But that's not an option with dog meat. So after the traumatic experience of killing my dog, it's finally time to talk to... Weird, okay. So we'll just reload and kill our dog again and... What the fuck? Okay, one more time. We kill our dog again and just go up the stairs and... Why the fuck is the game crashing? So I encountered a bug that made it so whenever I killed my dog, the stairs would glitch and the game would crash. But there's no way I came this far to lose to a bug. Searching the internet for the error code was fruitless. But I did notice that if I killed dog meat, I wasn't even able to leave the map without it crashing. So I had a plan. Travel back up north to the boneyard, kill my dog, and then travel back. And oh thank god, it works. I was really hoping he was gonna look like Matrix Morpheus, but then I realized that this game came out two years before the Matrix. Jesus, you old. And after convincing Morpheus to take me to the master, we are confronted with this. Richard Gray. Why are you so fucking ugly, bro? <laughs> the extended exposure to the FEV virus left Richard looking like a ropey bag of flesh. Or a Cronenberg. And he also talks like Bumblebee. All that resist. Yes. And what is that? From the Transformers. Pretty cool. Hubris is a common downfall for many leaders, and the Master is no exception. He firmly believes that his super mutants are the future, but when confronted with proof that he's wrong, I failed the speech check and got ripped apart. God damn it. Okay, back up north, kill the dog again, tell Morpheus I need to- I do not have a master, you imbecile. Oh fuck, I fucked that one up. Yeah, I failed the speech checks a couple times. I had, to, I had to resave a bunch. But for the last time, I killed my dog, went back to speak with Morpheus, spoke with the master. However, this time, we passed the speech check and were able to convince him that the data is correct and that his plan is flawed. He immediately gets depressed, just like I do whenever I look at the gaming trending page, and because of this, elects to blow up his facility and kill himself. This part was frustrating. When leaving the vault, the surrounding mutants would aggro on me and kill me before I even got a chance to leave. This happened like three or four times, which is three or four more times that I had to kill my dog. But I'm kind of a dog executioner, so uh... Not cool. But for some reason, eventually they just didn't attack me. No idea why this worked out this way. After leaving the cathedral, we get a final cutscene of the church exploding. Followed by a summary of the story provided by Ron Perlman's sexy voice. I mean, uh, manly voice. The death of the master was the first major step towards ending his mad dream of conquest. I don't know, I like it. The mutants, after losing their lab and their leader, fled east away from California. Necropolis is uh, truly dead. I mean, everybody was dead. We saw it happen. I don't know why he has to tell me. They leave a truly dead city behind them. The super mutants also destroyed the followers of the apocalypse, which is a faction at the boneyard that I did not mention even once in this video. I don't even know if I really talked about the boneyard either. It's a place in the game. High five. Killian takes control over Junktown and is overall a good leader. Good job. The Brotherhood keeps on being the Brotherhood and doing tech shit in secret because they don't trust anyone and are afraid that somebody's gonna steal their phone. Remember when I stole that motor from this dickhead? I hope he's having a shitty day. Shady Sands ended up becoming the birthplace of the NCR. If you've played Fallout New Vegas, you're familiar with them. And the Desert Raiders continued to pillage settlements until they were eventually wiped out by super mutants as well. Which reminds me, let's do a quick reset because I forgot about something. Yeah, I killed everyone at Shady Sands. Good luck starting the NCR now, you bunch of losers. Maybe you should have paid me for killing those scorpions for you. And also, I made a stop back at the Raider camp. Daddy's home. I told you I'd be back. But after the cutscene, we're thrown into dialogue with the Overseer of Vault 13, where he basically tells us, thanks, but, uh, you gotta leave. You saved us, but you'll kill us. I'm sorry. You're a hero, and you have to leave. 
Because of my popularity and rockstar status around the vault, the next generation of vault dwellers will be inspired to leave. And with no recourse, we're forced to watch one last final cutscene of our character walking away from the vault with their head hanging low. Now, if you had bad karma, and you were generally a scumbag throughout the game, you can kill the overseer after he tells you to piss off. <laughs> But since I was a gentleman in my playthrough, I'm now stuck watching my character walk off away from their home into the lonely nothingness. Despite saving everyone's lives and proving to be an undoubtable hero, we can no longer live in the vault because this boomer will throw a hissy fit if he's not the most popular boy in school. And all I can think is did I really have to kill my dog two dozen times for this fucking bullshit? Thanks for watching. I really hope you liked it because Fallout is one of my favorite series and I would love to eventually cover all of these games. So like and subscribe and comment. Help me out or I'll treat you like I did my dog. Wow, what a great video. <laughs>